Welcome. This is To Your Greatness with Dawn Mathis. I'm Dawn Mathis, the owner and founder of Institute Life LifeWorks. And today's podcast is called Better With Age. So let me ask you some questions. <laughs> Have you ever marveled at how quickly the years seem to be passing you by? Do you get depressed at how much longer your body takes to heal or even to move from point A to point B? To get your brain out of sleep mode? <laughs> to recall simple words so you can string together a single sentence? Do you ever forget why you walked into a room? Where you put your car keys? Or have you ever called someone on the phone and by the time they answered, you forgot who the heck you called? Oh boy. Yeah, been there many times. So you may start out by marveling and then you may quickly become sad and feel a sense of loss and maybe some anxiety about, about your future or the future. So here's what I'll tell you. Those things that I talked about are normal signs of aging, and it doesn't happen just to older people. Sometimes it just happens to people with too much on their minds. But anyway, we're talking about aging. So feeling this way, feeling anxious or sad uh, about, about these things as our bodies change, as our minds change, what's, what's happening is we're actually grieving as we're fearing for how our lives might look later on. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to dare the dark. We're going to stare it in the face so we can rise through this fear of aging. So fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. So just a quick overview of, of what I want to touch on briefly. Um, the first, we'll talk about grief. And then secondly, we'll talk about what we've been dreading, our old age. And finally, talk about some strategies and maybe some books, some resources that might, that might help you um, and help me to rethink aging and the process that we're going through so that we can enjoy the rest of our lives. So first, grief. What is it? I'm going to read you a definition from a book that, that I have called Healing Your Grief About Aging, and it's by doctors Alan Wolfelt and Kirby Duvall. They describe grief this way. It's the constellation of internal thoughts and feelings we have when we lose something. The anxiety, bewilderment, anger, sadness, and other emotions we feel on the inside. They also go on to talk about that this grief is normal and necessary and that only by embracing it can we go on to live the life that we yearn for. They also talk about mourning. And mourning is just the practice of embracing your grief, showing it on the outside. And going through this process then is how we get to the other side with grace, confidence, and meaning. So our dread of growing old. Benjamin Franklin actually had a quote, um, and he said this, there are two certainties in life, death and taxes. <laughs> so the former, we can do nothing about. And the latter, maybe, with an astute CPA and following the rules, we get by, but we still pay. So it is with aging. There are no rules that we can follow, per se. And as with this insidious ageism, this, this discriminatory feeling that exists in our society, which we'll talk about on another podcast, by the way, not only are other people, although well-meaning, lumping the, quote, old people into the same box of what's old, frail, 
boring, slow, demented, etc. In his book, Boulder, by Carl Honoré, this is what they say, or what he says. To make the most of our longer lives, we have to break out of thinking about aging as the worst case scenario. And, and to do this, we must also first understand where our own aversion to aging comes from. Our own ageism and how it became so ingrained in us. So the word itself, ageism, was coined in 1969 by an American gerontologist named Robert Butler. So he first defined ageism as the systematic stereotyping of and discrimination against people based on age. And later it encompassed also the denigration of aging itself. Honoré goes on to point out the difference between ageism and other forms of discrimination as this major point. Here it is. Everyone, including those that discriminate, cannot escape growing older. It happens to us all, barring an early death, of course. Even the discriminator. That's a major difference versus the other isms we have, sexism, racism, and others. It is also different, this ageism, in that we also encompass with it our own self-loathing as our bodies give up abilities that we once took for granted. So let's talk a little bit about the good news. There are three books that I would recommend, and you don't have to write them down. Don't pull over if you're driving in your car. They will be in the show notes. But they're these books. The first one and the second one I believe I'd mentioned already. Healing Your Grief About Aging by Alan Wolfelt, Ph.D., and Kirby Duvall, M.D., from 2012. Better With Age by Alan D. Castell, Ph.D., 2019, and the book Boulder, Making the Most Out of Our Longer Lives by Car Carl Honoré, 2018. So this third book, Better With Age, delves into some of the myths about aging and talks about what it means to age successfully. That's right. It's possible to age successfully. The book even gives example examples of people you may be familiar with, you may know, and how they are successfully aging. Better with Age is a guide for what we can do now, regardless of how old or young we are, to make sure we enjoy the journey as we do age. So using the Healing Your Grief About Aging as our more in-depth strategy today, let's talk about the five areas we can challenge ourselves to redevelop, reprogram, even as we age. The acronym I came up with, so I could try to remember them, is PIES, you know, like making PIES. They're physical, intellectual, emotional, social, and spiritual. So let's start with um, physical first. I have, a, I have a joke from Ellen DeGeneres. She, she tells the story about her grandmother. She says, my grandmother started walking five miles a day when she retired. She is now 97, and we don't know where the hell she is. <laughs> anyway, uh, so some steps to take then would be walking or yoga or Tai Chi, gardening, eating healthy, lifting weights, scheduling checkups with your physician. Okay, intellectual, take brain health supplements, 
fish oils, ginkgo biloba, vitamin B complex. Ask your physician what you should take. Meditate. Prioritize activities. Learn a new skill. Try new things. Read. Emotional? Financial planning. Get your will and your advanced directives in orders. In order, get that off your mind. Prior prioritize other tasks that you have so that you don't become overwhelmed. How about this one? Forgive. Here's another good one. Keep a gratitude journal and know that it is okay to grow. Social. Reach out. Join a grief support group if you need to grieve. Heal old wounds. Make a difference, like volunteering. Comfort someone else. Join a club. Get a pet. And spiritual. Create a vision for your life. You're not done. You're still here. Go to the water. Spend time in nature. Go on a retreat. So I want to share with you um, a couple of stories. Let me, um, I think I want to share the old one first, older one first. So it's about Grandma Moses. I don't know if you know who Grandma Moses is, is but she's a well was a well-known American folk artist who started painting in Virginia at the age of 78. She was born one year before the Civil War. She spent most of her life on a farm in rural Virginia in upstate New York. And she started painting at 78 because arthritis made it too difficult for her to continue her embroidery. So she accessed her wonderful memories of her childhood and the changing seasons in the countryside to be her subjects for her paintings. She painted over 2,000 paintings. She was discovered in 1939 by a man named Loud Calder, a traveling businessman who saw Grandma's paintings in a drugstore window where she was selling them. He bought the ones in the window and went to her farm and bought 15 more. And she became famous at the age of 79. And her art? Well, it's now displayed in the Art Institute of Chicago, the Metro Museum of Art in New York, and the Philip Collection in Washington, D.C. When her paintings go on sale, which they occasionally do, they reach a price tag of $1 million. And here's a more recent story about a woman named Dorothy Mannon. In her 60s, she started a club she called the CMA Club. CMAT Club, excuse me, CMAT, can't miss a thing. And she invited other people to join in. On her 70th birthday, she went skydiving for fun. <laughs> oh. At the age of 90, she lost her husband. And he was the love of her life. So she had a, a little bit of a hard time then. But with a coach and a structure of support, she gradually created a vision for her life. At the age of 90, you heard it. And this is what she came up with. She said to her daughter, I have always wanted to do China painting. Who knew? <laughs> Her work was so good, so intricate, so beautiful that she was commissioned by a local art gallery to display her work. She also started a nonprofit called Dorothy's Wish, where she started a microfinancing organization in her city to financially assist families to get on their feet financially. She raised money for this by writing a book that she called 90 Ways to Put a Zip in Your Day. I, uh, 
I have permission to give you a copy of a, an e copy of that book if you reach out to me uh, directly. I will see that you that you get that email to you as our gift. So your call to action is to get one or more of these books, read them. Reach out to me and get a copy of Dorothy's 90 Ways to Put a Zip in Your Day. It's, it's a phenomenal book, and it'll lift you up. And here is a saying for you to take with you today, to take to heart, to live it. It's a quote by the Victorian novelist, uh, I'm trying to remember, George Eliot. Yes, George Eliot. And this is what it says. You're never too old to be what you might have been. I'm Don Mathis. This is To Your Greatness. We'll see you next time.